That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois and his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice, indeed. It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Um, that's not really useful. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out for a while. I could work for the money. Don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. How about <coughs> if you don't give me the money, Why the not? train doesn't move? If it helps us get rid of that train. Oh, good. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. Oh, great. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Fix it. Unfortunately, my dear, Time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Uh, not yet, guys. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. That's really weird. I don't know who wrote this story. Alright, let's go back to the lot. No, the other way, the other way, the other way. Let's go back to the library, have a look around. So we need to fix the mechanical ego to solve the cuckoo problem. The cuckoo, we should get an egg from that, I think, and we can use the egg to open the bandstand. Ah. Alright, what's going on? Side thing, let's go... Um, okay, apparently we can't pick up a single book in the entire library. Even though the shelves are apparently full of books. Not a single one. So, what the... What is the point of making all of these screens if you can't actually do anything in any of them? Look at this. Oh look, a ladder. How convenient. Okay, I'm guessing the book that we actually need is just here. The Illustrated Dictionary of Plants and Mushrooms. Oh no, we have to read all this, don't we? Ah, I, that's handwriting. I can't. The what? The Yangala Cola? The Yangala Cola is a mushroom without stem. 
that has a chewy texture. Why would you chew it? It is a member of the poly polypote family and grows exclusively in the tunnels of certain on the trunks of certain trees of the Amazonian jungle. While it is edible when young, the Yangala cola has a woody texture and insipid flavor and offers no great culinary appeal. Native Amazonian tribes, however, are very attached to the mushroom. While they are so fond of the fungus, has taken extensive scientific research to elucidate. Biologists have watched the have reached the conclusion that the Yangala cola contains a special substance that is unique to the mushroom. The substance significantly affects vision and enhances its acuteness enormously. Amazonian Indian hunters discovered this effect and started using it centuries ago. The Yangala cola is um, dried and ground to a powder and consumed before the hunt commences. Its effect is instantaneous and the penetration of the hunter's vision increases extraordinarily. The hunter is then able to aim and kill targets concealed behind thick undergrowth even over great distances. Okay. Not sure why that is uh, useful, but okay. What else can we pick up? Nothing. Nothing. We got a book about mushrooms. That's all. Well, that's um interesting. I don't know how that helps. Alright, so is there anything else? There's a person there. There's a person we can't talk to there. I can't talk to that guy neither. Let's talk to the guy that we can talk to him. Excuse me. <coughs> Can I disturb you a second? No. You could be a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. Okay. Oh, wait. Loot. Wow, you almost can't see it. I was gonna stash that in my shirt. Amazon Memories of an Expedition. Oh, wow. Uh, the red Amazon cuckoo, this subspecies of the common blah blah blah, is endemic to the Amazon forest and is one of the region's most brightly colored species. The male's plumage is a bright vermilion while the female's is a little more... what? Rusted and neutral. Habitat and food, the, the red cuckoo uh, inhabits the more isolated and dense areas of the Amazon forest. It is reliant on the thick upper foliage of the rainforest to live its lonely existence. The explorer may nevertheless have an excellent view of the bird when the animal ventures to lower branches in search of... What? Oh, forest serving non grapes? Oh. The wild vines provide the bird with the majority of its food. The cuckoo is particularly partial to its juicy fruit. The red cuckoo may sometimes gorge itself on this fruit to the point of drunkenness, rendering it easy prey for any jungle predator. It can be eaten, such as the implacable law of nature. Reproduction. Like other species of cuckoo, the red Amazon cuckoo delegates the task of raising its young to other birds. This parasitic behavior enables the species to reproduce prolifically and with minimum effort. The female cuckoo scouts its territory on the lookout for nests under construction. She chooses the moment when its owners are absent to lay her eggs, generally in the afternoon. The host, meanwhile, will lay mainly in the morning. 
After laying an egg in her selected nest, the female will remove one of the host's eggs and destroy it uh, or eat it later. The cuckoo's egg generally hatches before the eggs of its adopted brothers, adopted brothers and sisters. The cuckoo chick will instinctively edge the other eggs from the nest. The young cuckoo grows fast. Sometimes its foster parents will p what perch on the back of the hungry chick to feed it. Even if the cuckoo's egg is very uh, different to the smaller host eggs, it nevertheless mimics the host eggs in certain ways. Not perfectly, but just enough to be accepted by most species. The, uh... The what? I can't even read that. The future? The red cuckoo's love of the grape could sadly prove fatal for the species in the medium term. European settlers who have tried to cultivate the grape on the Amazonian alluvial plains have decimated the Amazon red cuckoo population. Grape producers, to protect their harvests from what they would call in inveterate in in looting, have declared all out war on the bird. It is said to be feared that the cuckoo will. It is to be feared that the cuckoo will be on the losing side. The red cuckoo reproduces relatively well in captivity. And it's one of the jewels in the crown of the Bakastat University Ornithological Collections. However, scientists at the university have their own reservations about the species and its propensity to become practically invasive whenever conditions are favor favorable to it to the detriment of other... What? Other other rarer species. Friends of the Bakkenstadt aviary have therefore undertaken a policy of birth control to attempt to balance out nature's imperfections in this artificial environment. The forest Sauvignon grapes, today it is very uh, rare to find the forest Sauvignon grapes in the wild. The species has been decimated by a terrible equatorial phylox... I, I, I don't know if that's what it is. Epidemic. However, in Europe, successful cultivation of the plant is the pride of the Bakkenstadt University Botany connection, Collection and has largely contributed to the survival of the species around the world. Okay, so we have grapes. Let me just save the game. Menu, save. Save the game. Find grapes is what we need to do. Would it be inside the aviary or what? Maybe it's in the other side of this building. Let me just uh, walk around, go back. <laughs> we just stole two books from the library. That's so bad. Go on, walk faster. Alright, so we got two books. Let's just go to the other side before we go upstairs. Huh, there's a guy looking at the mammoth skeleton. Interesting. What's up, bro? What's up? Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammoth, this primigenius, is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? Can you push a train? To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths, and I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody is perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is. But I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Oh, that's what they all say. But 
Anyway, let me present myself. I am Cornelius Ponce, Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. So, you probably remember Hans. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Proboscidean Order is? The probo -whatian? Ah, you see? There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. I... Okay, but can you push a train? 